seconds of breath. But don't look at it as work. Look at it as mobilizing the upper back and shoulders and hips. Four point stance here, knees under your shoulders, hands under your hips, bear crawl position. Simply pick the hip up, pull it through to the side. Okay, you're going left and right this time, not like a grasshopper, you're going forward and back. Key component here is making sure that bottom hand is engaged and you pull that hip through. Okay, here, rinse and repeat, other side, pull the hip close to that hand so you have the best base of support, and then pull back to tabletop position here, or bare crawl position. Okay, simple stuff. If you have some tightness in your shoulder, it may be a little more challenging, but that's why we're doing it. And then three, yeah. two, one. Oh, we're getting good at that shit, man. Warm up, two exercises, three intervals. An interval consists of three supersets. First exercise is a hand release push up. Think about squeezing your glutes, tucking underneath, pinching the butt underneath so you have that core engaged. Your lower abdominals are contracted. Now, hand release simply means lifting your hands up off the ground, but not just lifting them off the ground. You want to activate those upper back muscles and then press down into the floor, keeping a nice solid core plank position. Okay, your head should be neutral, back should be flat. If you can't maintain that parallel position the whole entire time, nice flat body, it's okay. Drop your knees down. You can still keep your glutes tight, still work on the upper back. You can still go into a nice hand release push-up as you get stronger for the full push-up, which is just using more of your own body weight. And next up, roll to V-sit. Really simple stuff, great exercise for um, lower back stretch exercise for lower back and hamstrings if the event of a lot of shoveling. If you were doing some shoveling yesterday, yeah. this is a great exercise to counterbalance it. Tuck the chin down, grab the back of the hamstrings, roll, and then reach. Okay, you're gonna feel a stretch in your lower back and hamstrings. You're doing five. And those are your two. Built by Imam, four exercises as many reps as you can within that minute. But well, you're building up, starting at a low number and adding to it. Four exercises on the board are listed up on the schedule there if you're looking through home and a Zoom. First exercise is a narrow stance front squat. So here's how I think of a narrow stance. Your body is gonna naturally land the way it needs to land. Innate, innate, right? It's, it's kind of like innate intelligence, right? So I would say jump up. Wherever you land is a natural stance. For me, this is a little bit, you know, I probably shoulder width. So then for a narrow stance, I'm gonna step in just a little bit, trying to keep my toes facing forward. For me, that's narrow. Okay, now you're still gonna apply the same squat principles. Push your hips back, try to keep your feet flat, keep strong posture, keep your gaze up, and you're gonna do your reps, starting with four and then adding to each round. Okay, normally all week along it's been like adding the same, but I changed that this morning a little bit. So start with four as a base and then add to each. Again, I'd rather see quality form. You guys know me, I'm a pain in the ass when it comes to form. Next up, doesn't have to be next up, I'm just gonna demonstrate it next, is a floor press with a leg raise. So you're gonna start in the hollow rock position here Tucking the butt underneath, trying to keep that lower back flat. As you press up, your legs come up to a 90 degree position. Okay, back down, and then up. Now, the key component with this is what? Perfect. Really obsessed about that. That's where your energy should go. Pressing up is pretty easy. Lifting your legs is pretty easy. The challenge is gonna come in. When you drop those legs down, that back's gonna naturally arch. Right, naturally. Now, we don't think about it, but if we're sitting down a lot, these hip flexor muscles are super tight, right? So if you just keep on working the hip flexors and you don't keep that back flat, A, your core is not getting stronger, right? And B, you're just working the hell out of those hip flexors. That could potentially lead to lower back pain, so forth and so on, hip pain, it just goes down the list, right? If this is tight, this shrinks, this doesn't get active, glutes don't get active, and you never really get that full extension of your hips. So that's where the work comes into play with that. 
three, adding three each. Next up, you might as well, if you can, use the same dumbbells or a lighter set, keeping the dumbbells directly above your shoulder, right, stack position. Big exhale on the way up, try to keep those dumbbells above your shoulder as you sit up to a full sit up position. Now, tuck your chin down, one vertebrae at a time on the way down. Rinse and repeat. Ah, that's more difficult than this, right? So if you have to drop, fine. But ultimately, you want as much tension on the core as you can. And that's gonna come from keeping those dumbbells straight above your shoulder, okay? Four and four each time. Next up, alternating one leg or DL. So, two dumbbells, shift to one side. Think about keeping the neutral spine. We talked about that the other day with the kettlebell swings. <clears throat> Just gonna give it an angle here. So, shoulders rotated back, shift to one side, fold over at your waist, keep that those dumbbells close to your body, back up, shift, other side. Okay, sorry. Would you prefer me to do dumbbells? I would. Yep. What I see a lot, reaching with the shoulders. See my legs, how it stays straight? Sorry for my butt. You guys back here. But you're here. Nothing's happening in my glutes. It's all lower back and, you know, maybe front delts. Whereas this, good deadlift position, hips are back, knees are bent those dumbbells close to my body. It's a whole different exercise. So if we're trying to work glutes, hamstrings, and obviously core. So think about that when you're doing it. I'd rather see you stop once you feel this, rather than touching the ground. That means nothing, nothing for this particular exercise anyway, okay? I'm gonna say start with two or three and adding one to two. You make that call, be consistent with it throughout. Because that's gonna vary, balance, different weights and stuff like that. Let's go.